Welcome back to the Gaming Lads, and today we're doing a simple World of Tanks tutorial. Well, not quite a tutorial, but I'm going to teach you how to crew train in World of Tanks because it is quite a confusing feature for players that don't know. But as soon after you've watched this, hopefully you will become a pro at crew training. then I've got my two best crews here I've got my KV-3 crew and my Carnarvon crew as you can tell both of them have lots of little symbols underneath the name so we've got yeah so if we look at our Carnarvon let's have a look at these skills so the way you can look at your crew is if you press upgrade and then you can go over to crew and then you can have a look at it right say I click on the crew then we go on our skills and perks these are all the skills we we currently have so six cents brothers in arms mentor track mechanic repairs snapshot and smooth ride these are my ones and I'm currently training armorer and I'll get into all these kind of things in a bit so then you may be wondering well what actually is a skill um, so skills are little like perks like well perks and skills are technically different but for the they're like different add-ons that can make your tank better than other tanks for example with a stock well this packaged up Carnarvon with a with but with no screw skills I will have better aim time better repair speeds and I would know that he spotted me before he knows I've spotted him say we were like at the same distance away from each other at a bridge so skills and perks really important to make your tank better than others on the battlefield so yeah so the next question you may be asking is well how do I know when I've got a chance to crew well pick a skill so you get when you go over to this it will have a little gold plus on its own, you so you wouldn't have any of those skills. You just have the little gold plus. So say we go over to crew on there, and then we can choose a skill, and then you select any of these you want. So say you go in here and you want to recruit a crew. This is what you do on any first tank. Do not spend the a thousand gold. It's just not worth it. It's very expensive, and. You, yeah, it's about a fiver I'd say, which is which you could spend on better things like a premium tank. So you want to buy a 75% crew. Yes, it's cost silver, but the 75% means it works to better standard than the 50% crew, and but slightly worse than 100% trained crew. So it costs roughly 24,000 XP to well 24,000 crew XP to get to the hundred percent status so it's not that much really and then you can start training a skill See, I've got my Carnarvon here right and I want to move it into like the Paladin you click on no crew and then you go over to the Carnarvon and then it'll go in but because it's a premium tank you can move crews in willy nilly so it's alright but say you wanted to move your KV-3 crew into the KV-4 but I can't show you that but because I don't have it but for example say you do so th there's this thing called overclocking so it saves your gold and it keeps your crew skills working to 100% because once your well because when your guy is at 75% trained he only works the, the skills only work to 75% you may also see these two tanks next to each one of mine these are premium tanks so premium tanks give you boosts in silver and XP so it depends on how much money you actually want to spend on this game so the first premium tanks I suggest you buy are uh, is a more of a general tank for the entire nation and a and a lower tier one but not too low you want a minimum of tier 5 ideally so then it can participate in different ops 
but a tier 3 is gives you the most XP boost, but it's whether you want to be playing down at tier 3 so much. They cost less, but sometimes these tier 6s are very good, like this Cromwell B, and the T3488. And you can look at the boosts this guy gets in your details tab. So the overview, and then this pre it says at the bottom, this premium vehicle has 50% bonus XP, 2% bonus free XP, and 20% bonus crew XP earn. That is the big one. Not all tanks have one of these, but if you can see one that has one of these, go for it. They're very good. It boosts your, it accelerates your crew training like mad. Like more that, but most of premium tanks only have um, just as normal bonus XP earn. So yeah, you want to be looking for that, seeing which ones do the best to make your best decision. But overall, just pick a tank you think you'll like to play. Because if you like to play that t style of tank, you'll get more XP and it'll happen faster. There's no need having one that gives you like a zillion percent boost and you're not enjoying it at all. You're going in, you're just dying, and then you don't earn any XP at all anyway. So pick one you like. And then you can also get a nice... You, I also suggest, depending on how much money you actually want to spend in the game, you get o offers all the time, and sometimes different tanks go on offer. So these tanks can get a lot cheaper than they are retailed at, usually. So you want a good, nice, tier 8 premium tank as well, because they're just good fun to play around in. Like the Defender, Mr. OP, and then you go at the Paladin, which is my two choices. You play in them, they give you a boost, and they're really fun and enjoyable to play on your Ideally, say you're doing another British TD line, which I am actually, so go British um, TDs. I've got the 87, right? Very slow and annoying. So then I've also bought the Excalibur, which is a really good tank. It looks a bit dodgy. Its armor's not very good, but it's actually a really good tank. It's got a really good turret arc for a TD. Um, so it's really enjoyable. Hang on, what have I done now? So yeah, ideally, if de still, again, depending on how much money you want to actually spend on this game, um, you can buy a, ta a premium tank per tank type to train up different skills. The next thing I want to sh explain to you is overclocking. Is where, to get away from spending the 100% gold, go into crew, then I click on this tank. This is why I didn't want to ch choose a skill. So say you go over to convert free XP, right? You can see the bonus it's on, right? So basically, when you buy a 75% crew, it is 75% of 100, right? So it, you n basically you lose 25% of an overtrained crew. So if you overclock it by 25%, in theory, when you knock it backwards, when you move it out of that tank, it into the next tank, it will be dropped down. So it will still be fully trained and you can usually s still pick up a new skill. Um, so yeah, that is what you want to do, really, rather than, unless you like minted and want, just can't be asked and want to spend all your money. But ideally, it's just easier to do it like this. And this is how you check. You go onto the Convert Free XP tab and then you can see what it's at. And see what percentage it's on. So then, the skills we have are Repair, which accelerates the repair time of all your modules. So, very important, one of the first ones you need. And I'll go into the order, you need to make two things in a bit. Firefighting puts out fires faster, and I think it, do and it does less damage per second. 
So that's very important as well. Although I haven't got any of it on any of my tanks, but, you know. So then, camouflage, good for TDs and artillery, so it's hard for you to be spotted. Brothers in arms, so then you can get um, all your skills to work to 5% better. Mental, provides a 10% crew but XP bonus when it's fully trained. So basically, yeah, you, it just accelerates your progress of training skills so you want to do this pretty early on if the tank you're playing in is very slow and annoying or a tank you just don't really want and you want to get through faster this is one of the ones you want eagle eye so then this is quite good because when you look at a tank there's these little symbols that appear so then you know like whether it's safe to pop out because he has like a broken gun or something so it all tells you all that stuff, so that's really good. Jack of all trades. So basically, to put this really simply, if one of your, um, say your driver gets injured, right, it doesn't have as big of a, as big as an effect on it as it would normally. Six cents, this is one of the most important ones. Pr pretty much the first one you should train because it lets you know when you're spotted as soon as you're spotted rather than like five or three seconds later with tar with the little targeted thing recon in views it increases your view range by two percent green thumb um, so this helps you when hidden in foliage you g your camouflage is more effective than normal so again for TDEs, artillery, swimming lessons. I I don't really know the point of this one really. This one just kind of keeps you not in the water, I suppose. Um, well, it helps you um, stay underwater for longer, I suppose. So to me that just seems like because once you start drowning, you're drowning. You can't really get out. <laughs> so yeah, you're like. So it's just gonna take longer for you to get to the garage really pain tolerance so again this reduces um, the well this reduces the chance of critical damage to crew members situational awareness like recon this um, extends your view range by 3% instead of 2 and yeah Signal boosting extends signal range by 20% when fully trained. So I think that extends how long you can transmit your messages to, well, transmit your communications. Because I don't think as soon as it goes out of your transmission zone, no one outside of that circle knows what you're saying. Call for vengeance enables a radio operator survive. Um, okay. What is the point in this? Oh, so it just keeps people spotted for longer. So this is good if you're like a suicide scout. Um, relaying. So there's not really much point in this, but it extends signal range of allied communications vehicle coverage by, tw by 10% when fully trained. So I think this just helps extend it for everyone else. Like you're like one of those little pylons, and so then you can. Yeah, I've never used that. I don't see much point in it. Reduces the chance of engine fire by twenty five percent. That's quite good. So that'll be like firefighting, but prevents it more than helps put it out. <laughs> Smooth ride. This allows your circle to stay quite small when you're driving along. So good for. Heavy tanks, medium tanks, light tanks, pretty much you want to put it on most things other than ones you're moving around in. Clutch braking allows you to turn around more faster. Um, so this is good for like little TDs with like the little gun arc so then if you get encircled you can spin round a lot faster and get them. Off-road driving reduces the ground resistance when driving on soft terrain by 10% and moderately soft terrain by 2.5%. 2 
So yeah, this just makes you go faster in like mud and stuff. If you've got a really slow tank, you might just want to put this on so then you go slightly faster and accelerate a lot faster. I, th I think that's what it means. I think it just you just accelerate a lot faster, to be honest. Controlled impact. So this is... Um, so then you don't take as much damage when you ram into people and you deal more damage so if you because when you are in an artillery right and so it's usually some people just come and ram kill you if you start driving at them then you'll deal more damage to them and you're less likely to die so that's quite in, or important or you and you could probably put that in later skills on your heavy tanks and stuff if you feel like a rammer paratrooper this just makes you less likely to die from full damage really silent driving again this is a good one for your TDs maybe a light tank keep you spotted for less time so then you can't so usually when you're in a TD and especially ones with small gun arcs if you like turn a bit all your camouflage turns off and because you've moved um, it goes down like loads so this will limit that so you're less likely to be spotted track mechanic another very important one um, so you're able to repair your tracks 20% faster so this goes very well with repairs and yeah then you can type then you can fix your skills I mean your tracks once you've broken your tracks with both of them it's like zoop and then you're back ready to go snapshot this um, reduces reduces the the dispersion value while um, when you're moving your gun around so this goes very well with snapshot no that is snapshot smooth ride then you then your circle stays small for pretty much all the time dead eye um, increases the chance of getting a critical hit so yeah, pretty self-explanatory. I've never really done it. It's probably quite good if you want to annoy people and keep people tracked in place. I suppose. Designated target. Makes targeted enemy vehicles visible. Oh, so I think this is like if you're sniping someone and you're looking at him. Basically, if you're looking at them, um, they'll stay visible for two more seconds if they're not, t if they're not um, being... If they're no longer being spotted, armor makes your gun a lot better. Well, it makes your gun more accurate when it's damaged, because as you know, when you get a damaged gun, your your circle gets really big and there's really long aiming time. It's like driving a KV2, to be honest, or an OI. <laughs> Muffled shot again, good TD one. This makes you less likely to be spotted when you shoot. So, another very important one. Safe storage, increase ammo rack durability by 12.5%. So yeah, this is just going to make you not blow your turret off all the time. Adrenaline rush, I've never really experienced this, but it makes your, um, your reload a lot faster when you've got less than 10% hit points. So I suppose it could be good, but... I mean, once you're down to less than 10%, you're going to die. <laughs> suppose it might get you out of it, if because then you'll start out reloading some things. But, yeah, not that worth it. Intuition. So, this is only good for, like, really big autoloaders or... Um, what's this? What they called um, derp guns. Where, which have very long reloads or can so then it gives you a 17% chance or a 34% chance if you have two loaders that when you swap shells it you don't need to reload it again so that's quite good so yeah I think that's it that is all the skills So then we are now in my Carnarvon crew and I'm going to show you which order you should probably do your 
tanks. Well, but do your skills. So this is, as you can tell, it's in a bit of a mess because of how I do it. So the first one you want, this is if you want to pay gold during you do it. So you train up repairs, right? And then once it's at 100%, you swap it out. So you swap it out by clicking on it, and then you can select the one you want for 10 gold. And then that will be fully trained for it. Then you train, and so you want to swap it out for 6 cents, right? Then you want to train repairs. And then swap it out for brothers in arms. Yeah. Um, so then 6 cents works 5% better, which is quite good. And then you want to train up repairs again. And then do track mechanic. This is because um, with these... You see there's a little light, lightning bolt on next to it, right before the name. That means it's a perk, so it only works when you've got um, 100%, when it's 100% trained. Whereas repairs, it has those little calipers, and then it improves as you're training it. So your tank is getting a benefit throughout the entire process, right? so then you're not wasting all the 100,000 crew XP. Technically, because then it's getting better, better, better. So your tank is improving while you're doing it. And then you swap it out for a thing and then you redo it. So yeah, you've done track mechanic. So you've got these three vital ones, really. Then you want to train repairs again. And then if you want to, you put on mentor. That's only if you want to. It's not a necessity. I don't have it on my KV3 because I really enjoy my KV3. And the KV4 and stuff. They're quite good. So if that's the case, you just, really, it's vital to just keep repairs now, and put in Snapshot or Smooth Ride. Just train those up, because they're skills again. I mean, this is my heavy tank. You, Some people might say you want Recon and Situational Awareness, but I, I've got 100 spotting, I've got some coated optics, and I'm not stark for some space to put on other equipment. So yeah, it depends the stats really. So then, and I'm training armorer because my theory was with a conqueror. If you've not seen one, they have these big cheeks on. I'll show you, um, like this guy. It, but even narrower, so you can only really see the gun when it's held down. So. If they're gonna start, they probably might just start shooting HE at it, hoping it will like blow it up or something. So and that'll just make my gun just break all the time. So I was thinking, if I have armor, the gun won't be so bad if it keeps on getting damaged. That was my theory, anyway. And then I will probably train recon, situational awareness, jack of all trades. And because they're little um, caliper things, um, I'll probably just train them up as they are, rather than sacrifice some of my repairs or something. Hopefully I've explained this very well. If you have any more questions on how to crew train, just pop them down in the comment section below. And yeah. And I'll try and answer them to my best of my ability, and if there's loads of them I'll just make a second video. <laughs> Um, so basically, yeah, please like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy this video. Goodbye.